welcome to Strike a Pose, the web series from Sideshow in which three contestants battle it out in a six-scale figure posing competition. Each contestant will be given 12 minutes to hit the best pose that they can. When the time's up, they'll all three be judged in three categories, creativity, composition, and character. The contestant with the best overall score wins. All right, let's meet today's posers. First up is Steve. Next is Brian. And last but not least, we have Warren. Hey, Steve. Hey. Thanks for being on the show. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's very nice to meet you, man. Thank you. Um, you've got a good solid collection going on behind you. Am I seeing some uh, Iron Man stuff back there? Yeah, so I have uh, three Iron Man. Um, I, I waited, I hesitated to get in the die cast because of the mm -hmm. price. I came into Hot Toys for the Predators, which I've since sold, which is a terrible decision. <laughs> I should have kept them. Um, and I got into uh, the Marvel lines. Like uh, I, I just gravitate towards certain figures like uh, the Captain America, the Thors. I, I love Star-Lord. I got both Star-Lords. Um, and I got Boba Fett down there and, and Mando. Um, I have all my Kenner figures from when I was a kid from Jurassic Park and Aliens and all that stuff. So I always bought something and collected something. I had guitars. What skill do you think you possess, Steve, that is going to take you over the top and make it so that you beat out the two other contestants that you're facing down today? So personally, I've always been uh, into art and art an artist, uh, drawing my whole life. And um, so I was always gravitated towards uh, seeing what was on screen and drawing it and, and finding the, the form and the movement of those of those um, creatures or characters from, from film. So I think my artistic nature and attention to detail will come in. All play. right. Yeah, that's a very solid answer. Thank you. Mr. Carr. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm familiar with your work. Yes. <laughs> You have been a toy photographer of some renown for quite some time now. Um, your Instagram account has been passed around. I've been following it for quite a while. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, what got you, what got you into that? How did you get started in toy photography? Uh, it started several years ago. I actually used to test video games for a living. And so there was a time when uh, I was on call. There was no game to test, and so, uh, I had just purchased the new Street Fighter toys from Soda Toys. And uh, so I took the toys. I had a small little digital camera at the time. And so just as a joke, I did a Street Fighter comic with the toys and their different heads, the different facial expressions. So when I came back to work, I said, hey guys, this is what you do when you have too much time on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and so at the end of that comic I, you know, I came back to work so I put it to be continued and all my co-workers were like we need to know what happens next what happens next I'm like there is no happens next I, that's, that's it and so literally everyone kept asking me to do more do more so I took more pictures and then it just exploded and now my collection exploded so I have to up my game now with my figures <laughs> <laughs> mm. This is your turn to actually go ahead and do some trash talk. And what qualities do you think you possess that, is, that will allow you to really knock your opponents uh, down and, and emerge as the champion of today's show? Uh, my thing that I bring to the game is, I'd say, um, add to realism. Add, I like to make my characters, as far as their poses are concerned, I like to make them be as lifelike as possible. So I'm always taking into account, you know, can a real person actually move like that? And sometimes when you have to do a double take because it's standing so real and things like that, then then yeah, I, I feel like I've achieved my goal. So, yeah. Excellent, I love it, I love it. That's a good answer, thank you, thank you. Hey Lauren, how you doing? I'm good, Terry, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks so much for being on the show today. My pleasure. I'm looking around at everything going on behind you. You seem to be a pretty eclectic collector. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. I'm big on Disney, Marvel, Harry Potter, Star Wars. So it uh, looks, I'm seeing a really big Harry Potter thing back there. I'm seeing a really big Spider-Man back there. I'm seeing evidence of Star Wars. If you had to pick a favorite, not just one toy, but like one franchise. Yeah. yeah. Everything else behind, but take one collection with you. What would it be? Uh, right now, it's going to have to go out for my Star Wars stuff. I've got the Asaz Ventress yeah. statue here and a bunch of clone troopers, and they're coming with me. 
Much respect. Uh, what do you think that you're going to bring to the table that's going to knock these guys over and help, and help you to emerge triumphant in today's contest? I'm bringing my creativity today. I mean, I've got a Spider-Man 2099 sitting over here in a hammock, so everything's fair game. Okay, everybody, welcome to the show. We are we are at the part of the show that is one of my favorites. It is the reveal of the figure that we're going to be that we're going to be working with today. Is everybody ready to find out what that figure is? Oh yeah! Right, yes. Drop that box on the table, rip it open, pretend like it's Christmas, and have a good time doing it. I love opening up. <laughs> Oh. oh my gosh, okay. It's the Kylo Ren six scale figure by Hot Toys from Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. And it's glorious. It is stunning. It's the best portrait of Adam Driver that we've seen to date. I'm just gonna pull back this hood a little bit to, so that you can see the proof of that. Dang, look how good it looks. Uh, the helmet has been uh, reconstructed using a modified version of the Japanese art of Kintsugi. Uh, only instead of gold, they're using some flaming, glowing Sith material. Uh, that's the technical term. Uh, we've got a variety of hands to use with this. Obviously, you have options because you can use either this helmeted portrait or the unmasked portrait. Uh, there is a light-up version of the lightsaber arm, which we're not going to use today, and a little bit of a color that you can add to the base just to give yourself some variety for display. I can't wait to see what today's posers are going to be able to pull off with this figure, so let's let them do their thing. He's definitely the best character from the film. He's the most captivating, the best story arc, and this is a figure that I've had my Thank eye on. Thank you! Yeah. I haven't been collecting the new series, so I have my eye on this figure, but I'm excited about it. What about you, Brian? Have you had your eye on Mr. Ren? I have, because actually I just recently purchased the uh, Ray, so in a way, so I, I, my mind is already racing for photos and everything for these two. So yeah, I'm excited about this. <laughs> Lauren, what do you think? Are you a fan? Are you a fan of Kylo Ren? I am pumped. I think he's a cool character. I mean, out of all of them, he's really got a lot going for him. He's got the struggle between the light and the dark, and not really knowing where he fits in. It's Awesome. I think he also has the best costume, which is really going to come across in the figure. You'll see when you get it unboxed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, as you may know or may not know, um, in the history, in the past with a Strike a Pose, the winner of every competition is the only person who was able to keep the figure. But due to the nature of the at-home edition of Strike a Pose, uh, we've elected to allow all contestants to keep the figures that you'll be posing today. So congratulations, everybody. Now let's bust that thing out of its box and see what it's got. Steve, we haven't exactly talked about this since we've uh, since we've been recording, but uh, there is an imminent thunderstorm, potential tornado warning in your area right now. How do you think that's affecting your uh, your chances today? My heart's racing. I'm on edge. I'm sweating. But I'm ready. <laughs> Take all that and use it to your benefit, my friend. Steve, you should probably yeah. just head to the basement now. Call it quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'll make it. Steve? All right. Each one of our posers has on the table in front of them a Hot Toys Kylo Ren six scale figure with an identical array of accessories. So we are ready to begin. Any questions? Then we will begin today's posting session in three, two, one, go. The intensity. I think I'm gonna put the Kylo Ren in the, the winning pose, you know, so that winner stance. That's that's what I'm putting. <laughs> Brian, you're not supposed to just copy what I'm doing. <laughs> I noticed he has a really cool wrist peg. It's like a it's like a bigger wrist peg that goes into the body. It's pretty fat. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Easier. Beefy. Oh, the hard thing is trying to like mask or unmask. <laughs> that is a important question to answer. Yeah, I, agree. <laughs> I do not like to actually just recreate scenes from movies that kind of like, you know, do his own thing. Uh, kind of what were they doing when you were not around? It's like the concept <laughs> behind Sideshow's Mythos line. Just doing things. Uh, yes, exactly. Exactly. That is a great thing. All right, this Kylo Ren six scale figure comes with everything that you're going to need to hit pretty much any pose that you want to from the film. Uh, you've got uh, you've got all the hands that you could possibly want. Uh, the light up lightsaber for those who are discerning and wish to have that light up feature on their on their figure, it's right there for them to use. 
Uh, the helmet is glorious and features a light up feature of Japanese Kintsugi, like I talked about before. And you also include very similar to the cloak is very similar to the one that we saw in the previous film, except it includes the addition of a hood, uh, which is not something that we saw him use in the film. That's kind of a kind of a missed opportunity. I think that uh, Sith and Sith Lords and Jedi and hoods are kind of uh, kind of linked, one might say. Uh, the saber obviously is glorious. It features lightsaber blades that can be removed and, uh, and taken out of this particular hilt and moved onto the powered one or just removed entirely so that you can display the hilt without the ignited blades. Also included, of course, are the obligatory six batteries, three for uh, use in the light-up saber hilt and more to be used in the light-up helmet. Before each show, I strike my own pose with the figure in question. And if by chance, by blind chance, any of the posers are able to hit something even remotely close to, to the pose that I've struck here, whether it's perfectly composed or just somewhat thematically the same, then I'll give that poser an extra point. I think that it's worth it just for blind stinking luck. Those an element of chaos into the equation and I think a Sith Lord will really appreciate that. And by the way, just, uh, just for the sake of argument, I actually did time myself when I did the uh, pose that I did here. And, it, and oh. it, it, took me, it took me eight minutes. So that's not bragging. That, that, that's actually meant to tell you, to reveal maybe a little bit about the degree of difficulty. Brian's been a toy photographer on Instagram for a long, long time now. I think that that experience might actually give him a leg up. Kind of concerned that the other two might just be a little outclassed today. Hmm, Lauren's really going the extra mile with working that cloth, especially around the arm there. Historically, that sort of attention to detail has really benefited people who've been on the show. Hmm, Steve needs to be careful in that decision to implement the use of that hood. Historically, those things can look a little bit poofy, and they take a lot of work to get right. Uh, it might very well affect the score. Stop posing. We've reached that point in the competition in which we throw you guys a curveball. With concerns over supply chain issues and shortages, we're not sure what's going to be more stressful this year, holiday shopping or holiday shipping. More and more cargo ships are sitting out at sea, waiting to unload all of their contents. It's going to be a lot harder to get those gifts under the Christmas tree this year. Ho, ho, ho! Thousands of your favorite pop culture icons in stock at SciShow.com. I'm going to drop a little bit of a clue here right now, and I'm going to say that one of you looks like you're going to get that extra point that we mentioned earlier. Uh-oh. Oh. Wow, and there's such a disparity in these in these poses, man. It's like nobody's doing the same thing, and that's great. I love, <laughs> love, love that. And everybody, pause, hands off your figures. All right, we've reached the point in today's competition where we throw you guys a curveball. We're just going to and make a little caveat just to make things a little bit more interesting here in the final five minutes of the posting segment. It's a predetermined element, and in this case, everybody, as part of their display, and I don't care how you do it, has to include the helmet in their display. Cool. Doesn't look like anybody's going to be hurt right. by that too terribly much, so let's continue rolling <laughs> again on three, two, one, and go. That's right, the helmet. Posers might be tempted to ignore this particular accessory because you don't frequently see Kylo Ren wearing his helmet in The Rise of Skywalker. Notable exceptions include the opening battle on Mustafar and that great shot on his bridge, on the bridge of his Star Destroyer where he's lording it over all of his commanders in the First Order. But you don't have to have him wearing it. I mean, I can see why you would actually want to showcase this excellent portrait, but if you want to, you can do something like this where he's using it to create a contemplative pose or, just to keep it simple, just go ahead and put it on the stand. Like he just took it off and dropped it on the ground and he's getting ready to go into combat. Something like that. The opportunities are endless. Let's get back to them and see what they're doing with it. I really am liking what Lauren's doing with that torso there. She's got a bit of an ab crunch going. Really has Kylo looking pretty intently at that helmet. I think it's a nice touch. Bold move on Steve's part to go deep and dynamic with this figure. Those boots aren't breakaway, so you're not going to be able to get them flat to the ground. At least not both at the same time. Uh, Brian hasn't had his hands on his figure for a good long time. I, is he done? Uh, does he think that he's done? Uh, overconfidence can be a killer in this show. Uh, 
What do you think, Steve? Do you think you got the winning pose there? I, I'm happy with what I'm doing, you know. I haven't been yeah. giving too much um, attention to the other contestants, but uh, it's, it's a cool figure. He's, he's really dynamic, and um, the material is really easy to work with. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I really, I really like it. Lauren, I'm sensing... I don't know if it's a if it's light side confidence or dark side arrogance in the fact that you appear to be done with <laughs> yours already. Yeah. Yeah. The hard part right now is I want to pull it apart and do another pose, and I'm trying to resist. Like. One sympathizes, my friend. Uh, Brian, I think you're in a similar boat. You look like you're just standing there, like, "What's up?" <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm I'm very happy with uh, how he's looking. He's a uh, Dirty, his attitude, the way he did things in the film and stuff, I think I've kind of captured that. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I have. 60 seconds, everyone. Ah. Five, four, three, two, ah. one. Hands off, figures. Posing session is done. All right, Brian. How you feeling about that pose you got there, bud? I'm feeling pretty confident. Yeah, cool. Uh, talk to me about it. What was going through your mind as you as you manipulated the figure, as it, as it evolved, the pose evolved? Where were you going with this? Uh, well, originally I was going to have it set up where the hood kind of draped over and, you know, just kind of see a little bit of the helmet. Um, but overall, I really like action poses. Um, so I had him do a little bit of a stance to where he, you know, in the film, he was kind of standing his ground. But uh, after thinking about it, I was like, you know, I've never really seen him, you know, quite often leap in the air. So that's why at the last minute kind of raised the leg a little bit. And uh, I like how the cape just kind of falls in that area. So it's 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 not a huge jump. It's just a leap just to have the cape still in that same spot and still leave the hood behind. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident with what I chose. All right. All right. Cool. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Terry. You were confident that whole time, man. That was uh, that was some really that was a really short amount of time you took to nail that pose, and uh, you seemed pretty pretty happy with it. Uh, so talk to me about it. What made you decide to go this route? I am. I mean, I tried to think of how I think of Kylo, and you know, I think Ben really struggled with who he was, what he's doing, and uh, I just tried to capture that in the pose of really contemplating, like, is this who I am and who I want to be? And I think it came out great. Yeah, I think it did too. I'm uh, I'm really impressed with the overall look of it. I think you captured a lot of the character there. So yeah, full marks for that. Thank you. All right, Steve, you struggled with the elements, with the gods, with the figure. Um, I don't know. Actually, I, don't, I, I think it's unkind to say that you struggled with the figure because what you've done there is actually really, really solid. Uh, there are some elements that I really, really dig. Talk to me about what made you uh, what made you do what you did there. So really, what I was trying to do is capture how Adam Driver portrays. Um, Kylo Ren in the film, and what I was kind of saying earlier is that how he really kind of stoops low when he kind of when he attacks, he kind of slides on his feet a lot in the film. So I was trying to capture that that energy. I think you've done an outstanding job of that, man. I uh, I I'm put in mind of that opening scene when he's uh, when he's battling the residents of uh, the denizens of Mustafar. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it looks it really evokes that uh, that scene quite nicely. Well done. Creativity. Composition. Composition. Character. The winner is
All right, the scores have been tallied. The results are in. Now, before we started the posing session, I mentioned to all of our posers that I was going to be granting an extra point to any one of them or more than one of them that might have actually come even close to the pose that I myself have struck with the Kylo Ren figure that I have here with me today. The time has now come for me to reveal what that pose is. And it looks like we have a winner of an extra point. Oh, wow. So yeah. congratulations to Lauren. You get an extra point on today's show. I'm really thrilled that you did that. You did that. It made me really happy to watch that evolve. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. How do you feel about that? I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, if I can do anything somewhat like Terry, I'm in good shape here. <laughs> oh, please. <God. laughs> now, before the show started, before we even brought you guys online, uh, I determined um, which a, I determined a specific accessory, and this is something a new thing with Strike Pose that we're doing with every episode. But I determined a specific accessory that if you guys use it in your pose, that you will get an extra point. And in this particular case with this figure, that accessory was the hood. Oh. So wow. anybody who brought the hood into play, that to means that both Lauren and Steve receive an extra point at the today's show. Congratulations, wow. you two. Brian, I know that you mentioned that you were thinking about using the hood. I'm really yeah. sorry. That you, I'm really sorry. So close. Like, so close. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now that we factored in those bonus points, are you ready to find out who won the contest today? Let's do it. All right. With that being said, the winner with a combined total of 28 points. It's a really high score for this show. It's Lauren. Oh my wow. God. Congratulations, Lauren. Thank Congratulations. you. Brian, condolences, my friend, because what you've done there is a very cool pose. Uh, there's no doubt. There's <laughs> no you. doubt. Um, and I like it a lot. Uh, and I like the idea that he's at first. I thought that you were trying to create some sort of a um, like a flight uh, sort of a thing, like he was leaping through the air quite a bit. Um, but I can kind of see what you were doing there, like a little bit of a hop. Like he was just like like he's just doing yeah. a slight little bit of a skip towards his opponent. So with that in mind, I think that if I would have done anything, if I were to call out anything, uh, it would have been maybe do just a bit more of a torso twist, uh, just to kind of just oh, to kind okay. of break that flat plane that's being created there by his torso, by his hips, and by his legs together. Um, and maybe I don't know how it would look, but if there was a way that you could just create just a little bit more dynamism with the arms, um, that probably would have contributed okay. a lot as well. Good stuff, Thank man. You. Looking forward to seeing more stuff on your Instagram too. It's uh, it's really fun to follow you. Oh yeah, a lot more pictures coming. I got ideas All already. Right, let's go to here. <laughs> All right, Steve, great stuff there. Hey, thanks. I'm really excited about this pose. Uh, that opening scene in, in on Mustafar where he's doing exactly as you described, where he's sliding around, uh, wiping out the uh, denizens of Mustafar. Again, just really great moment for me watching that film, and you've really captured it well here. Um, you've done something interesting with the cape here, and I'm hoping that you can tell me about it because... Um, because it looks like it's somehow it's it's been shortened, right? I mean, how 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 did you create that look with it there? What's going well, on with that? I I kind of have it draped over the shoulder. I was trying to get the motion of if, if he's swinging, it would be kind of flowing back with the wind. But without the wire, you can't get exactly how you want it to, to look. But it's kind of laying up over his shoulder and draping back down his back and to the mm -hmm. side of the way he's twisting with 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 the thrust. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to capture the movement of the, the cape flowing that direction. It's really cool. It has the it has the added effect of that that shortened look of the cape. It really contributes to the overall wraith like appearance of of Kylo's costume, which is something that really grabbed me um, in Episode Seven when we first saw saw Kylo Ren. The kind of marriage of of a wraith like figure with uh, with sort of um, Crusader knight armor, uh, Templar knight armor, if you will. Uh, about the only thing that I called you out for as far as composition uh, was concerned was the uh, was the sword. 
um, I think I would have done something just to break that flat angle. I mean, maybe it's just my, my perspective here, but it seemed to me like it was pretty much straight to the ground. The outcome was definitely affected by the bonus points here. Um, you did an outstanding job here. It's, it's one of the finest poses that I've seen on the show. Um, job well done. Thanks. Lauren. Perry. Wow. Um, first time that we've done two possible bonus points, and right out of the gate, you wound up getting both of them. I'm over the moon about it. <laughs> it legitimately took you over the edge. Uh, it was down yeah. to one point for first place, and uh, and the fact that you uh, that you actually came very very close, close enough to my pose that you were able to uh, get that extra point. That's what took you over the edge. That's what uh, that's what brought you into the winner's circle. Hoods are frequently my kryptonite, and in fact, even with the with the pose that I struck here, I feel like mine was just a little bit too poofy. Um, and it's it's just, it's just very hard because of the downscaling of the fabric um, to do a really great hooded pose with six scale figures a, a lot in my experience. But your answer to that was to go the opposite direction, to not fight it. Rather than, rather than fight it and try to get the hood to go flat, you've let it billow out to the side and as if it's been caught by the wind. And there's something that's just really beautiful about that. I saw it happening while you were posing and I got really excited about it, um, like immediately. Um, additionally, another thing that you did with that cape was I saw that you kind of tucked it in and allowed it to like lay naturally across his arm as if the fold has been caught there uh, between his arm and his body. Uh, that, that extra special attention to detail with fabric is something that not a lot of people do. And I include myself in this statement. I don't frequently pay enough attention to the fabric in these six scale figures when I'm posing them um, to contribute to the real overall realism of it. Uh, a couple more things to call out, just the posture of his body, the way that he's just kind of hunched or crunched a little bit at that torso there, just slouched, I guess would be the best term for it. He, he, he looks borderline crestfallen as he's studying that helmet and just really doing a lot of soul searching. Just absolutely beautiful in every way. And the simplicity of it um, should not detract from it in any way. It's That pose is everything that it needed to be. Beautiful job, job well done. I'm really impressed. Thank you. Well, I will say I had a great time being on the show. I've actually seen a number of episodes. And so this is kind of a dream come true for me to be and have an opportunity to be on this. Even though the things I decided not to do was the things that hurt me in the long run. But I got to give credit where it's due. Lauren, you did a great job. And uh, I got some ideas based off of the stuff you did now. So, uh, yeah, it's still a win-win. I take that. I want to thank everyone for having me. I had a great time. Um, great uh, figure and I want to thank my contestants they did great and congratulations to Lauren uh, I just gotta say you know Terry's biased I don't know who put him in charge but you know what hey whatever it's all good I'll just move on live my life <laughs> oh man I am still speechless uh shout out to Terry for choosing me as the winner and the other two guys they did great I was so worried about this coming in and I really like it. He's going to have to stay this way for a while on the shelf because this is a trophy pose. All right. As much fun as I have hosting any episode of Strike a Pose, it's these fan editions that really mean the most to me. I just genuinely enjoy engaging with people that I consider to be peers in this hobby that we all enjoy. And that's it for this episode of Strike a Pose. Be sure to let us know who you thought won the contest in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.